Good morning, brothers and sisters, and especially the ones that are with me in the morning here, and then those that God's going to draw to the MOS online ministry throughout the world. Some of the stuff we're preparing and doing and the teachings that are going up, you know, my wife is even praying for me to focus on teachings and, and, and to help people understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, rulers, thrones, kingdoms, dominion, and wickedness in high places, the word of God says. But this is a very interesting 10 verses this morning, Exodus 11. And, and Father, open up everybody that ever hears this. Put such an anointing on the word of God today and what flows out of all of us here, that as servants, we can be light in a dark world to many, many people and have many, Father, I pray for all of us, many divine appointments. And I pray for the brothers and sisters that are out working right now. Some of them that when I first put it up, I always send them because they weren't here to hear it. But now I made it so nobody's got excuses. When new people come in, we send them. And I got to say this to my brothers and sisters here with me. I'm getting so many thank yous for sending people the YouTube. And the, the, the people are saying, wow, all the worship songs and all. They don't have to think. All they got to do. Can you realize 1,100 different things going on on our YouTube channel? There's something there for everybody. And, and some of the things that people are questioning. And, and, you know, I'm going to be putting up the head covering. You know, I already got the testimonies going up about head covering. But we're going to put up deliverance stuff. That's it's it's going to be an atomic bomb. I'm I'm telling you, we ain't seen the best of what God's going to do, because this is the beginning of what I think is going to be a revival. It's got to start and it's got to start with people. And, you know, where else is God going to go when when Yankee Cho, when he started that revival in South Korea? Listen, good. Thousands of people started listening to him. He went for like, I don't know, nine years. I met the guy. Nine years. And he'd get up early in the morning. Now, I didn't get up as early as I get up that early. But he opened his church. And for years, he was thanking God for the people that weren't there. He's got the biggest Christian fellowship. And yeah, the devil's thrown some curveballs at him all. He always does. Look at the, the, the dozen apostles. And one was the man of perdition, Judas. So there's always bad. There's a bad apple everywhere. And, and there's no perfect church. There's no perfect pastor. Look at Ted Haggard. He was a worker at HBC. And... Michael called him for deliverance when he fell. And that guy still needs deliverance. And he went from running a 15,000 people church, and today he's got a house church, and the man still needs deliverance. I'm going to put a couple of those videos up so people could understand what that's all about. You pray for the guy. That's all. But here we go. This is so powerful in my heart today about this. 10 verse read kind of funny because it's a simple read but it's called in the thomas nelson the subtitle is the final plague now i, I want us all to zero in on the word final and it says plague because we've been reading the plagues now and we all know that it was god that was doing the whole thing it's always and you got to equate that just like deanne said in the testimony today she went to God, her and Jason, and instantly what they were desiring, it happened. I can't tell you how many times that happens to me lately because I'm, I'm being a doer of the word of God. I don't care who you are. If you're not following scripture as written and you're not listening to the, the Holy Spirit brings godly sorry, brings conviction. He does the whole, you know, 
when you when you really get into who God is, that's why he gets all the glory. He does the whole thing. He created us. He saved us. And it's a gift from God that we're even saved. That I mean, how many of us would want to act like God toward all the people that come into our lives? Man, there's people we don't even want to be around. There's people I don't even want in the prayer group right now unless they repent. There's even people I won't talk to right now. You know, I pray for them. We all got a hit list, you know, and the Lord said, this is Exodus 11, first verse. The Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh. Notice what's going on here, because if you go back to the all the chapters we've been reading and studying, God was always pre-warning Moses to go tell Pharaoh what was going to happen before it happened. That's how intimate Moses' relationship is with God. And, and that brings conviction on me when I read this chapter and the previous ones. Because, I mean, it's got me going back to where I need to be with prayer. And sometimes you need to fall on your knees. You need to get into the secret place when it's you and him, you and God, you know. I always go back, a good preacher tells you, it was God who, who saves us. It was God who created us. And in Ezekiel, it was God who put his Holy Spirit in us so that he, would, he, he, God, would cause us to walk in his ways. And it's the Holy Spirit that guides us and brings us into conviction, repentance. Jesus said, unless you repent, you too shall perish. There's so much when you look at the illustration of God's word this morning. You know, I'm going to go back to it, the first verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. So the plague that he was going to bring, this is the one. This is the one that even today would blow America or this world apart. Because this is the one that's going to make Pharaoh, yesterday, he, he, he saw that the gods that he worshipped were nothing against the God of the Hebrews. And afterwards, he would let you go. Hence, when he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out of hence altogether. So this is the big bomb upon Pharaoh, and it's the situation that if you really think about it, and, and you're, you're being warned all the time by God, you're seeing we, we all go through this. It's part of the process. Whom God loves, he chastises, brothers and sisters. And the second subtitle of this little read, Jewels to be Borrowed. Verse 2. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And, you know, I, I look at the, what's going on in the end times. I look at people that I know, and here they were, you know, Moses is trying to Tell Pharaoh, this is what God is going to do. And he's telling the people, you need, to, you need to have some little bit of money, maybe, or something. In that time, it was gold and silver. And, 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 and there's people today, because of the one world government, because they're walking around. And see, a lot of people are hoarding and doing things. And I, I always look at people. And I, I say, why are they doing this? To be absent from the body. Real believers shouldn't worry about anything because of all the illustrations we read in the Bible. 
So l- listen to what it says here. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man, Moses, was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of all the people. Because you got to remember something. He was raised an Egyptian. He was part of Pharaoh's court. So everybody knew Moses, even killed an Egyptian. So that sets the stage for what God is telling Moses to go talk to Pharaoh about, look, you're, you got a hardened heart, man. I, I got to talk to you. This has got to stop. Your people are suffering on every plague. You know, you, that's simple talk I'm bringing that forth. Moses warns, here he goes. And, and you, you think hard about this because there's a lot of us that have children. Look at a whole country of wealthy people in America or anywhere in the world. Okay, here. And, and the Jewish people, they're very hardcore about the first son. We've learned that through Genesis right into Exodus. The birthright being stolen, the whole thing. And, you know, Pharaoh was like a god. And Moses said, thus saith the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. He's telling Pharaoh what God's going to do. And all the previous times, we all know stuff happened, but Pharaoh's heart was still hardened because it didn't hit Pharaoh in his own home, his own court. You know, just like we are in America or anywhere else, we're busy just living our lives. When I got that text from Lori last night about Carl DeBona. It saddened me because Peter was my friend and Marianne suffered the loss, you know, five years ago of Peter. And she's not remarried or anything. So when you lose someone that's close to you, it's pretty tough. Listen to what it says here in verse five this morning, because it'll halfway house here and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sit it upon the throne even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill and all the firstborn of the beast now I'm an animal lover I know what it's been like for me when I have a young puppy and we've got to put it down. Breaks my heart. And there shall be a great cry. I mean, if someone was coming up to you or I and was giving us this kind of warning that God's had enough, And now he's going to require something you love to be taken. He's not just saying it to an individual here. He's talking to Pharaoh, the king, and all the Egyptians. There shall be a great cry, verse 6, throughout the land. And remember, this didn't happen yet. We're just reading the prelude, the, the warning that God spoke to Moses and said, now you're going to go tell him this. Moses didn't have any say-so in any of this. And, And it's the same way with you and I today. We're supposed to be instruments of the kingdom of God. We're supposed to preach the gospel to every creature. Not go play golf. Not go get entertained. That was the old us. The new us is about the father's 
business. This is a strong message. Because this is the God we're all supposed to be serving. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let me continue. There shall be a great cry throughout all the land, such as there was none like it, nor shall be any more. This is a one and done situation that God's going to do to Pharaoh the king. Let's go on. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. In other words, a dog wouldn't even harm an Israeli child. So God's separating all the Israelites' children. Remember, Pharaoh wanted to make Moses go and leave the kids behind with him. Remember Moses, his mother, because they were killing children, and, and, they, and she ended up raising them as the maid for, in Pharaoh's house. Let's look at this. He says, against man or beast, that you may know that the Lord does put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Well, we're separated as believers from the world right now, and we are a minority. You're always going to be a minority. We're always going to suffer persecution and affliction because that's what God tells us in the word of God. And that's why we're not to be in bondage. When we're in bondage, we're, we can't be a servant. It's almost impossible when you're in chains. You think about the reality of choose this day whom you're going to serve. That's why Jesus said before you can help others, get the plank out of your own eye. Jesus is the deliverer. The Bible says, call up. There's no excuse for any of us. I'm on that little road right now where I'm talking to God morning, noon, and night. I went to the doctors. I, we cut the meds back. I'm strong and operating this morning. Yesterday, my wife told me to go lay down. She was afraid I was going to fall down the stairs. And all that is, is taking thoughts and, and starting to realize, wait a minute, I got a God. And it's faith that pleases God. So look what happens here. Verse 8. After God gave him a difference here between the Egyptians, and he didn't happen to Pharaoh yet. He's talking to his mouthpiece. You know, Moses, go tell it to Pharaoh. This is what I want you to say. You know, continue on that. Let my people go. And all these thy servants shall come down unto me and bow down themselves unto me, saying, get thee out and all the people that follow thee. And after that, I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh, again, listen what, what he's going to say. Because he did this in every one of the prior. That's why... It ain't going down until tomorrow, people. There's always that conversation, Moses. So before we do anything, don't you think we need to seek the Lord like Moses was doing? He needed help because everything he was doing, and, and it was because God was still in control from beginning to end. The same thing is the Alpha, the Omega, same thing in our lives. You might not think God is there, but get into that prayer. Get into that communication one-on-one -on -one with God sometimes. Because that's all God. God says, I will be their God and they will be my people. That's how simple it is. And yet Christians today worry, fear. I see it all the time when I talk to people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, and my wonders be multiplied in the land of Egypt. 
So here he's having a conversation. Now you're having a conversation with God and it ain't happening yet. And it didn't happen the last whole group of plagues. You have to not quit and keep walking with the king. That's where I want to put this right now in my heart to my brothers and sisters that are hearing what I'm saying. This, this message of 10 verses, believe me, because we pray every day, people are going to sooner or later because of demons getting casted out in this ministry and in the other ministries we're affiliated with, there is going to be a pouring out of the Holy Spirit that we've been waiting for for a long time. Trust me, they don't like any of us. And I, it'll be proven by God, not by Charlie Costello. Here. 10. And Moses and Aaron. There he is. Remember, Aaron was his sidekick. There, it, it, it goes back to Jesus sending them out two by two. That's why you you got to be in fellowship with believers. Anytime two true believers come together and agree and pray, there's power in the name of Jesus. Not doubt and unbelief. I'm talking people that are living and walking with Christ. That's what Moses and Aaron were doing. So the last verse today in this read says, and Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. We've read this for days so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of the land. Wow. Thank you, Jesus, for this chapter in, in Exodus. Now, let me turn over here. I highlighted in one of my commentaries this morning. Let me pull my short commentary up so I can finish this little teaching. Because tomorrow's, tomorrow's the life changer. And finally, God said enough is enough. And we all know the story. Because of all the stubbornness and and, and Pharaoh was holding on to that stubbornness. And that's what we hold on to a lot of times. We're stubborn and we don't want to follow God's word. We want what we want to do. We got itchy ears. We want to hear what we want to hear when we go to fellowship, not the word of God. And a lot of preachers drift. They go, they go off the word of God. And old time pe preachers, before they really knew about deliverance, they turned around and they were storytellers. You're not going to tell me. I got everybody's books. I have, I have a massive amount, all different denominations, teachers, people that God used over the last couple of hundred years. I got those kind of books here at my home because I had a real experience with God. He said to me, find the old people read the books the answers are there god doesn't leave us as orphans and commentaries you got to really understand there's wisdom amongst a multitude of counselors it's in god's word so here we are today we're in 11 but i want to go back to 10 and start there with the commentary that i didn't jump in with yesterday I just gave a little piece of the pie. The statement of the close of verse 26, yesterday's read, points a lesson true at all times. The second step in the spiritual life is not revealed until the first is taken. And that's amazing. And, and, and to cross-reference, go to the Gospel of John, chapter 7 verse 17 because i i did that yesterday egypt must be left that is the first step 
before the na nature of spiritual worship can be learned. In other words, when you're born again, you got to start dissecting the old nature, the things that you used to do. That's why, that's why even today I appreciate that song. I will never be the same. Because God takes us out of darkness and into his marvelous light, which is the word of God. In chapter 11, uh, 1 to 3 is in parenthesis today. And that's where we're going to start. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, pretty much, because 11 and 12 run together. Remember all the teaching we've been doing for the last Genesis to Exodus. Now we're in, we're going to start in 11. And the commentary I highlighted, the key parts of 11, then we go tomorrow to the rest of the commentary for 12. The 10th plague may be said to have destroyed all the gods of Egypt. Okay. We talked about that. Adam brought it out explicitly. And, you know, he got, he got a few hits overnight. Most people don't even understand these chapters because they don't study. They just read them. The Holy Spirit states in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, that's chapter 5, verse 7, that the Passover pictured Christ's sacrifice of himself in order to save sinners sentenced to die. Well, that's what we got out of the garden. We're all sinners. And, and, and what Adam and Eve did, they were created by God. They knew God. They spoke with him. But what did they do wrong? They didn't obey God. Well, it's the same thing today. We live our lives contrary to the word of God, some of us. Even though we read it, we don't hold on to it because the devil's got us so busy. And it happens to me just about every day, people. My, my good wife is a witness to some of the struggles I'm going through, you know? And when I read the commentary, it comes alive, some of the stuff I'm reading here. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm doing this to share my walk with other people. I don't need, you know, I was sitting there looking at a, a video the other day of Summerall's biography. Well, my biography is going to be what I'm doing right here with all of you. I'm not going to write books or anything. I'm serving God. Part of my service is casting out demons, healing the sick. Not me, God, the Holy Spirit that lives in me. He's the deliverer. He's the healer. But he needs vessels to operate through and 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 believe me dirty vessels disobedient children don't get answered prayer you can quote me on that because we know the truth the truth is already written all you got to do is read the book two great facts appear in the passover and that's why the uh, the messianics want to go back and start worshiping Old Testament feast and everything because it's really like a prototype to Christ. Two great facts appear in the Passover, the certain doom of the firstborn. There it is. The Jews do this because they know what God did to the firstborn. Remember Herod? And they were killing the babies because Herod didn't want that firstborn to live. Well, a certain doom of the firstborn and his and certain salvation. He was doomed to death by God, not because of his conduct, but because of his birth. This latter fact could not alter, and he was therefore hopelessly lost. He was, however, absolutely saved because of the value of his life sacrificed for him. He knew he was saved because God had pledged himself to most certainly save all, all 
who sprinkled the blood upon their doorposts. And that'll come tomorrow in chapter 11. So even in the short stuff, it goes 11 and 12. Life. Uh-oh, life. Listen to this. One more play. The word sounded ominous. Ominous, excuse me. And they were, for the last plague was death to the firstborn. When you trust the Lord, it means the difference between light and darkness. And you could see that back yesterday with Adam in chapter 10, verses 21, 22, and 23. You know, I put this stuff on the air. All you got to do is go back and read these scriptures. And life and death, God made this difference in 11.7 today, in the read today. The Passover lamb is a picture of Jesus Christ who died for the sins of the world. John chapter 1, verse 29. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 6 and 7. Do you call him a savior, the savior, or my savior? Luke 1, 47. You know, and that's something you got to think about. Is it just talk or is he really your savior? In 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, Jesus is illustrated as the perfect lamb who had to die to save us. We are saved not by admiring his example or by studying his teaching, but by applying his blood to our own hearts by faith. And it was the lamb that saved the Jews coming out of Israel. And it also sustained them for the journey. So do we today as believers feed on Jesus when you meditate on the word and make its truths a part of your inner person? That's powerful. You know, when I sit here and get to read this stuff to myself, as well as to my brothers and sisters that are here and the ones that are going to be here in spirit when they listen to the teachings that we're putting up on the internet. It's as good as it gets when you read God's word because the truth is in God's word, the truth for our spiritual life, the truth that Jesus Christ loves us. He revealed himself through the word of God. He's admonished us all to believe that man don't live on bread alone, but we have a spiritual life too with the physical life and we can avoid a lot of turbulence and we can have what I, I, I said earlier when I started today, let me grab my Bible. I got to bend down. At least now I'm bending down and I'm not getting dizzy. So praise the Lord for that. And I'm going to close with what I started with today. And it's something I already did today one time, but I'm going to do it again as a reminder to everybody sitting here. Psalm 91, the secret place of the Most High. Something that we need to make a part of our lives, you know, to surrender our our life, our spiritual walk to the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the word that became flesh, the one that we're calling upon to save us for his full salvation, to deliver us out of Egypt. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the newsome pestilence. Look at all the things he was doing for his people in the Old Testament here. All the plagues. 
not not one Israelite, even with the the hail and the, the fire, every day it was coming down. Goshen didn't get touched. Think about what I'm saying here. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth, well, the word of God is truth. Lean not on your own understanding. Because scripture, all scripture, is for teaching and training in righteousness. And then he comforts us in verse 5. He says, thou, not, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, 10,000 at thy right hand, and it shall come not nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. You're gonna see what's gonna come down on people that are not believing in God. Happens all the time. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. In other words, you live in fellowship, in the light with the Holy Spirit of God's word. And once again, you didn't do anything. It was a gift from God. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Doesn't mean we're not good. We're going to get sick. God allows that. When I'm sick, I cry out to God. Gives me more time to say, help me, Lord. And I, I do that every day, people. And uh, Hebrews, will, you know, Hebrews comes right in here. God gives the charge of God's angels, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. You should be thanking Jesus every day for the breath that you breathe. You should be thanking him because your names were not blotted out. Your names are in his book because you're praising the Lord. He's given us technology today that we don't even have to burn gas, get in a car. We can fellowship right now the same way Paul's handkerchiefs healed and delivered people when they didn't have communication lines. By faith, they sent them out. Today, if we have the, the, the mustard seed, the faith of a mustard seed, the Bible says, we can move mountains. Thou shalt bear thee up their hands. Those are the angels. Thou shalt, thou, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. I'll never forget when I fell off the ladder a couple of years ago and whacked my head. And I, I got up and protocol for my conditions or I have to go to the emergency room. I just started thanking the Lord for the angels catching me. Rubbed the back of my head. I said, no lump. I'm okay. And I, I kept going. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. That's all the power of the enemy, people. Satan's a roaring lion. You know, so many people that call themselves Christians have nothing but excuses. You know why? Because they haven't made God their habitation. In other words, you eat, you drink, you breathe, you have fellowship with him. Because he has set his love upon what? Me. That's what it says here when you read this psalm to yourself. That's why it's become my favorite little read every day in my life. Therefore, will I deliver him? I will set him on high because he has known my name. I, I get excited when I sing that song, I Speak Jesus. I sing it all the time. It motivates me when I'm weak 
for him to be strong. I can do all things through Christ. He gets the glory. He strengthens me. Look at this on 15. We're at the end of this. Nobody's going to tell me they ain't got time to read 16 verses. You can do it in a minute. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Replace him with her because God took the woman out of man's rib. But you got to acknowledge God in all your ways, everybody. You got to have that walk with the king every day. And then the last thing, I loosed this in the Ernie this morning. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. It's nothing we can do. It's what God does through us, people. Father, I thank you for the reading of your word at the end. And I hope people that hear this will trust and obey if you haven't received Christ, simple. Ask him in. Tell him you need him as your savior. And the moment you, you let your heart and your lips pull that Romans 10, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, open that up and read it and say it to him and then thank him for saving you. And then you're born again. You got the new birth. And you need to read your Bibles. And get in fellowship somewhere. So God bless everyone.